Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In the military industry, technological advances and the development of new devices are usually influenced by the socio-political situation and conflicts at that time. One of these cases involves Boeing's Phantom Eye UAV, an amphibious project created to provide the U.S. military with advanced aerial surveillance driven by combat conditions in Afghanistan. For this, Boeing designed and built this hydrogen-powered UAV, capable of operating at altitudes of 65,000 feet, far above commercial air traffic, weather disturbances, and most airborne threats. With its two large insulated tanks, hydrogen is stored within the fuselage of the aircraft. When combined with atmospheric oxygen, the mixture ignites, generating thrust to drive the aircraft's propellers. There's a whole host of new technologies being demonstrated, and this couldn't be pulled off without a team that's coming forward with the innovation and the solutions to bring this all together. Once the prototype was developed, it was shown to the press at a ceremony held at the Boeing facilities in St. Louis, Missouri. At this event, the company focused on showing the technology developed and applied in the Phantom Eye systems to be used during reconnaissance activities. The company executives emphasized the most important features of the aircraft, including its hydrogen propulsion system that allows its long endurance flights. To ensure these capabilities, the aircraft went through several testing processes, including taxi tests, to evaluate the basic ground handling of the plane. During this test, a unique cart system was attached to the aircraft to accelerate it up to 30 knots, over 4,000 feet of a runway. So it's huge to capture the data that we did today, uh, to allow the team to evaluate it so we can fine tune the, the models, understand if the software uh, is correct, and understand how the propulsion system is gonna react as it moves forward. After ground testing and taxiing, the plane was prepared for its first inaugural flight, scheduled to last approximately 30 minutes. The engineers and members of the hangar were in charge of reviewing the aircraft's propulsion systems, in addition to the condition of the hydrogen tanks and the fuel supply systems. The propeller engines were revved up, readying the aircraft for takeoff. Based on previous tests, the aircraft was placed on the runway using its special rolling launch cart. During the flight, the Phantom Eye banked over Edwards Air Force Base, reaching a cruising speed of 62 knots and climbing to an altitude of 4,080 feet. With the knowledge gained from the first flight, several adjustments were made to improve the flight performance of the aircraft. Improvements such as upgraded engine oil pumps, a new landing system, and better flight control software were needed to overcome problems discovered during the initial flight. During this second flight, the Phantom Eye took off from its ground car at a speed of almost 60 knots reaching an altitude of more than 8,000 feet, more than double that reached in its first test. Already in the air, the test managed to increase the flight duration of the aircraft, which helped the engineers acquire more data from all their systems. However, after testing concluded in late 2014, the U.S. Air Force decided not to continue with the project. 
the Army's changing strategic priorities and high costs to convert the prototype into an operational platform diminished its viability. Therefore, the prototype was renovated and moved to the Air Force Flight Test Museum for public display. As seen with aircraft, like the Phantom Eye, Boeing's creativity and ingenuity are also demonstrated by other unique designs and solutions, such as the MQ-25. Also known as the Stingray, this aircraft is an aerial refueling drone created by the Carrier-Based Aerial Refueling System Program. The MQ-25 Stingray aims to replace F-18 Super Hornets currently designated in refueling roles. So more of those aircraft will be freed up for combat use. After its development and construction, the MQ-25 performed its first test flight to evaluate its design and performance. The test flight lasted two and a half hours and was designed to assess the aircraft's aerodynamics. Boeing used remote operators to control the aircraft, highlighting the plane's autonomous capabilities. What we just saw was the MQ-25 take first flight. Uh, this has been an enormous accomplishment, but it is more than that. It is a partnership with the Navy. As refueling is one of the main objectives of the MQ-25, this aircraft uses ARS to achieve these operations. This device consists of an external pod with all the equipment for aerial refueling, including a hose and drogue system. Such a pod is installed under the plane's wing, where the attachment points are located. During pre-flight procedures, hangar members are responsible for securing the refueling device to the structure. Once installed, the technicians and control team carry out the corresponding checks of all aircraft systems, including remote flight control, leaning gear, and control surfaces. In the air, the MQ-25 can demonstrate its refueling capabilities using the ARS. This system employs a flexible hose stored inside the external pod in the MQ-25. A drogue, also called a basket, is located at the end of the hose to stabilize it in flight and provide a funnel to aid the insertion of the receiver probe into the hose. To refuel, the Stingray flies in front of the aircraft, whose probe is guided into the funnel. With the force of the airflow, the connection between the tip of the fuel probe and the valve is established, beginning pressurized refueling. Seeing the aircraft's potential to withstand different conditions, the U.S. Navy focused on fielding the MQ-25 for aircraft carriers. To achieve this, the aircraft had to be adapted to be able to take off and land safely on those runways. Besides, a deck handling system was implemented to ensure the MQ-25 had the precision needed to maneuver the deck of a naval carrier. The Navy conducted training operations to master all the procedures and devices needed to operate the Stingray on a carrier. This training and preparation are crucial as the Navy plans to field a fleet of 76 MQ-25 for aerial refueling operations. Operations with such dedication and attention to detail are also seen in other processes with other unmanned aircraft. In moments like the assembly of the MQ-9, the engineers and team of technicians must be attentive to every step they take to ensure that the aircraft operates without any inconvenience. After assembly, 
The crew started loading the weapons and munitions on the UAV hardpoints. The variety of weapons that the MQ-9 can carry includes Hellfire missiles, laser-guided bombs, and joint direct attack munition. The aircraft can carry a maximum payload of 3,800 pounds, which limits its flight endurance during surveillance missions to 23 hours. Once the plane's preparations have been completed, it is taxied to the runway, ensuring there is no obstruction within 25 feet of the aircraft. This can be ensured with the targeting system of the MQ-9 that can monitor obstructions during taxiing. The control crew must ensure that the runway meets the minimum requirements, being a length of 5,000 feet and a minimum width of 75 feet. With all requirements secured and the aircraft in position, drone operators can use two approaches. One is a manual takeoff, where drone operators launch the aircraft remotely in faraway ground control, with airmen closer to the runway, ensuring the proper conditions of the takeoff and recovery. The other procedure simplifies the process and reduces the number of people needed, as an autopilot feature known as automatic takeoff and landing capability allows the MQ-9 to perform those tasks independently. Training exercises are carried out so that the MQ-9 team can explore all the capabilities of the aircraft and use its tools safely. In the case of the installed weapons, inert munitions are used that do not explode when hitting their target or are not simply launched and are used as ballast with the weight of the real weapon so as not to alter the handling of the UAV. Therefore, these exercises provide the necessary conditions to evaluate the range, control, and power of the weapons used by the MQ-9 and have controllers ready for any event. All control and tracking of this aircraft is performed within an advanced cockpit ground control station. This structure was designed specifically to use remotely piloted aircraft systems, such as the MQ-9. Upon entering the station, you can see a similarity to a traditional aircraft cockpit, with multiple screens that provide data on the flight parameters, sensor signals, and weapon systems. Implementing advanced technology in military forces, such as drones, is necessary to improve their effectiveness in the different missions carried out. Seeing the potential of these tools encourages the development of new improvements and innovative devices. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.